Welcome to Portland Industry Insider. This is our monthly sit-down with an expert in the uh, acting industry here in Portland to find out what's going on in town and how actors can be more successful with their business. And our first guest is indeed a key player in Portland. She's one of the best-known agents in town, and she's also the owner and president of Ryan Artist, Shirley Thompson. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming and uh, joining me. Um, I guess the best way to start this is with a congratulations. Thank you. It was back in April, mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah. yeah, so it was 10 years that I have had the agency. Um, the agency itself is um, fast approaching its 40th year oh, in know. the business here in Portland. Um, and it was my initial um, agent. So I was repped by Ryan Artist here locally for many years. Um, and then the opportunity came up for me to be able to purchase the agency 10 years ago. Yeah. So what was the driving motivation behind that? Because this is a, kind of a crazy business and I've known you almost as long as you've had the agency right. and you definitely have a few things going on on a daily basis. So. Uh, yeah, I spin a few plates. Um, you know, for me, it, I it was kind of doing simultaneous. So most people in this market have a day job mm -hmm. and they this industry kind of works as a professional hobby. And so I was doing the same thing. So I was modeling, but I was also in management um, for different companies. So when the opportunity then kind of came up that I saw Ryan Artist was potentially for sale, it was like the perfect meshing of my two worlds. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I knew that I was kind of taking a really big leap um, because I wasn't as familiar with the acting side and the acting community. I did know the modeling side. Um, so it was it was long nights of like <laughs> reading the SAG AFTRA rules and regulations books and going to every possible event and theater production and so I was just just swallowing big gulps of information for the acting community so that I could be some sort of a resource. I have to imagine that reading the SAG AFTRA manual was a very good sedative. <laughs> yes, it's brutal. <laughs> and you're like. I just read three pages, but I don't know what I read. Yeah, right, in very small time, yeah. right? Uh, what's, the, what's the biggest single change you've seen in, in the industry in general, but in specific to Portland as well over the course of the time you've been the owner of Rome? Yeah, um, I would say put it very simply, it is speed. Everything is so much faster. So originally, like, you know, back when agents were working for me, they would create a package of physical comp cards and they would send it via messenger to a client across town and then they would sort through and, and the process was just that much slower. You pretty much always went into a go-see or an audition, you took your materials and now everything is digital, everything is stream. You know, so TV and film auditions, most of them are done on camera. Uh, so it's rapid fire. Right. What are the common mistakes that actors make when they're dealing with them? Being slow would clearly be a big one, but what, is the, what are the common mistakes that actors make in dealing with that, the new paradigm? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it, you know, it's hard because, like I said, most people also have a day job. Um, and so it's really hard to be able to kind of accommodate those two worlds in such a fast-paced environment. Um, you know, so when we reach out via email and we need a response in two hours, but someone's at work, like, how can they quickly respond with the information needed? Um, and I also think keeping up with technology is a really hard one um, because now you have to put yourself on tape. You have to know multiple casting sites to be able to log in and download information, um, even emailing your headshot, emailing your resume. Those kind of technical things can hinder someone really quickly. Right, right. So you have to learn that this slide will take the small file, and this slide <laughs> will take the big file. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's funny, you know, I mean, we're joking about it, but it's true, this slide won't take a file larger no, than whatever. No. And right? that's why it's not uploading. Um, and, you know, and so I think that it, it's really important to be proactive and do the research ahead of time. So how do I work this site? What is my login information? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is my headshot already current on there? Is my resume current? So when it comes to that audition time, there's not a mad scramble to try to like make sure that they have everything. Um, know how to email your resume over um, so that at the last minute you have to email a casting director 
it's not a panic. Right. Or a two hour, or a two hour process. Or, two, <laughs> or calling an agent going, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. What hasn't changed in the 10 years? What's the thing that hasn't really changed? The expectation of professionalism. So, you know, because it is technically a hobby here for some people, for most people that are doing it, um, it, it has a tendency to become second burner. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of it being, I have to have most recent headshots and most recent pictures, I have to always provide my most current resume. I need to keep my sizes up to date. Um, with instead of pushing for being the best as though it is a career path, sometimes it doesn't um, it doesn't stay at a professional level. That's right. How do you coach people gently mm -hmm. to how do you coach people yeah. on the, on that say, listen, this is fundamental yeah. how do you right. work with that? Well we start by we give a lot of information when we bring talent on. Mm -hmm. um, and then we coach and we guide and then we nag <laughs> <laughs> okay. and then we pester it is a constant conversation because there is a lot of information um, and you know sometimes especially like an actor has a hard time realizing that current sizes a, a, a men's suit size is really important information and sometimes that could be the difference between booking a job or not booking a job we normally have between four and six hours to submit on a project. Wow. So it comes in, we have to turn it around very quickly. So when we have a client that's asking for a specific suit size or a dialect or a language skill set, if we don't have that information already in front of us, that actor or model is probably gonna miss out on that submission because we just simply don't have time to reach out to everybody and go, how's your Spanish? <laughs> and is your shoe size still an 11? You know? right, sure. So we really we rely on our talent to make sure that we have the most current information. Um, otherwise, it's, you know, it's too late. We miss that one. So the fundamentals, to so kind of summarize that, the fundamentals are have your basic information and your basic content mm -hmm. ready to go, mm -hmm. and then work fast mm -hmm. when the bell rings. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah, gotcha. we have to do the same thing for our talent. We have to have, you know, we have to always be at the ready to quickly get that information out to casting. Right. So, basic information, headshots, of course. Mm -hmm. What are the other, I'm sure you could give a long list of what uh -huh. actors need to do, but mm -hmm. beyond those couple of fundamentals, what else really needs to be in the toolbox to be successful in this town in the acting business? You have to keep training. You, ha you have to keep current. You have to keep relevant, um, and and be a, like ahead of the curve as far as you know. If if we get a project that requires a lot of stunts, like you know when we had Leverage and Grimm that were in town, it did require a lot of basic stunt work, and we were always searching for people to have stunt training, um, driving, have a driver's license, have a passport. Um, just different things that make you more accessible so that you don't have to say no to a client. You don't have to go, oh, you know what, I don't know how to drive. Mm -hmm. Learn. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, those are, those are things that, you know, it, it sounds so simple, but basic life skills a lot of times roll right over into the, the acting community. So having, you know, if you um, know language, be really good at it and practice at it. Um, knowing dialects that fit your look are always requested. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, you know, like I wouldn't go for a Jamaican accent because it doesn't fit my look. Mm -hmm. But you know, go for go for something that is realistic for you to portray on TV. And those those roles come very often, and we're always searching for talent that fit those demographics. Seems like anybody with a New York accent, a good New York accent. <laughs> can't, can't go wrong with a good New York yeah, accent. A good Brooklyn accent. Yeah, you know. English accent. <laughs> yeah. Spanish. Yeah, sure. uh, beyond connecting actors, you know, I, I think I, I, I come in contact with a lot of people who are new to the mm -hmm. industry, uh, particularly moms with kids who are interested in modeling or acting. And they, you know, they're always looking you know, for information about um, how to manage that. Um, and I think that in their minds, once they have an agent, 
I'm golden. Right. You know, it's like I've got amazing today and I'm on Disney tomorrow. Right. Um, so for people who are new to the industry who are thinking, who think like that, mm -hmm. um, besides connecting people with the opportunities, really what is it that an agent does to serve the actor? Mm -hmm. Well, here in our market, what an agent does is different than a larger market. Okay. I would say, you know, here locally, because it is smaller, we kind of work as a manager and as an agent, so we're a bit more hands-on, I think, okay. than, um, than some of the bigger markets. Um, so here locally, it is guidance on which pictures to use, when to get new pictures, um, it hopefully, you know, like we try to provide um, different workshops and just training opportunities, or at least give them um, like a, a location. So we use our Facebook page as a here's a class coming, here's a workshop coming, here's a voiceover workshop coming, so that they're constantly training. Um, but you know, it's also just that guidance through the process because the process can be overwhelming. You know, we'll send out an audition notice, and it's different every single time what you need to wear, what you need to take, how you need to respond, how it needs to be scheduled, where you need to confirm your time slot, like it's all different. How you slay. Yeah, how you slay, which way you, you know, self-tape, which way you hold the camera. Horizontal. Yeah, whether, you know, whether it's okay to mail your, or um, email your headshot, or whether you have to take a hard copy, like there are so many details. So, you know, my team and I are constantly kind of filtering those questions to walk people through, and eventually you kind of get used to it. It becomes old hat. You read the emails completely, and it's not as overwhelming or scary. Um, but it's definitely a step, a step by step process. Right. What do you, you know, how how do you prepare even before you go to set? And you know, we're reminding parents, okay, we'll take snacks, take quiet entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a long day. Communicate to us when nap time is if it's a little one. You know, so we have to have that really open, fluid conversation. Um, so that they can be as successful as possible. So, I think you answered this question, but let me make mm -hmm. sure it's real clear. Well, again, you, you said that, that Ryan acts as a, a combination of manager mm -hmm. and agency. Mm -hmm. That's not the case in a lot of other markets. LA is right. a good example right. where those are two different cases. Totally, yeah. So, maybe you can explain a little bit for those people who are looking outside mm -hmm. of Portland mm -hmm. for another market. Mm -hmm. What the difference is between a manager and an agency, just right. on a very fundamental level. I think you answered that question, but yeah. maybe you can just clarify a little yeah. bit. So traditionally, a manager is someone who manages your career for you. So they're going to be the ones that are helping you um, choose your photos, pick the right photographer, potentially have lunch at the right cafe, because there could be a good director there. <laughs> okay, right. um, and they're, just, they're going to help you, you know, find um, the right agency for you. Um, so they're going to be more of a guide. And then the agent is the one who provides the opportunities. They're getting you out to casting. They're you know, submitting you on the projects. And they're going to walk you through the actual booking part of, of the project. And you do, um, and, and Ryan Artist we, does casting. Yeah, pass the yeah. Work. you know, in, in large markets, so, you know, traditionally you would pay an agency fee and a management fee. Right. Um, so we just take the one fee. Um, but it's in our best interest to make sure that our talent do have all the right materials um, and that they are ready to go, and that they do have, you know, they, they do go out, get out to the right networking events. Right. But it's not at the same scale as a larger market like that, right. like LA and New York. Other than the aforementioned, today I'm signed, tomorrow I'm at Disney. Right. What, what, what would you say is the biggest misconception mm -hmm. of a new actor headed into the agency mm -hmm. world? Whether they're looking for an agency or they're just signed, and hopefully, hopefully when they sign, they read that package of paper, and, <laughs> yeah. they, and they get the idea right. of what exactly the real reality is about yeah. it. But as standing on the outside in, what is the big misconception that people have about agents? Yeah, the, the Disney one is a big one. Um, you know, the, your agent, we're, we're there to make money. We'll make money off of bookings. We don't make money necessarily off of you becoming famous. That means you're probably going to go to another market anyway. Um, but, you know, we're, we want to help, anyways, our agency wants to help people really have a good life, an enjoyable life, and I don't feel that fame is part of that. Okay. I think that you can pursue your passion and you can enjoy this career without it being life-altering, my two cents. But I think a big misconception is that it's easy money. And we get it on the modeling side too. Um, but that we have a lot of people that come and maybe they did some theater in high school or they did some modeling at some point, 
Um, but that it, it's, oh, you know, I, I can fall back on this. And that that's the biggest requirement, is that once I get an agent and they're gonna provide the opportunities and there's easy money, the money will just start flowing so quickly. I think it is underestimated how much work goes mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. It is a constant, it is a focus at some point every single day on your career, right. even if you have another full-time job. Right, right. Well, as the father of two teenage activists, <laughs> I know that all too clearly, <laughs> yeah. right? And what we talk about, what we talk about a lot is the difference between looking good and being good. Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of energy that a lot of, in our day and age, mm -hmm. in the age of Instagram, mm -hmm. a lot of energy gets put into looking good. Mm -hmm. But there's not a lot of energy being put into being good. Right. And at the end of the day, being good, mm -hmm. it reminds me of being good, being good at your craft. Right. It may not seem like the quickest way to get there, no. but it is the most sustaining way. Yeah, sure. And in, in that process of always wanting, always working to be good, mm -hmm. there's a lot of disappointment. Yeah, you know, a lot of no's. A lot of no's. And I do tell, you know, when, when I have uh, parents of kids who are new coming in and asking me questions, I try to speak from that point of view mm -hmm. of a parent. Yeah. And what I tell them is, is that if they don't love it, mm -hmm. then you should probably they should probably play soccer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and or when they stop loving it, mm -hmm. go do something yeah. else. Yeah. Or, or you know, but then on the positive side of it, not to get off on this tangent too much, but on the positive side of it, my children have developed a fair amount of resiliency mm -hmm. because they've been hearing no mm -hmm. since they were six years old. Yeah and realize that they're out to do the best work possible, mm -hmm. and that yes or no can be determined by a thousand different things that are completely out of their totally. control. Yeah, yeah. and so. that you can leave, if you, if you did your work, if you worked really hard on it, if you went prepared, if you were there on time, you wore the right outfit, if you had your headshots you know, done and ready, <laughs> then you can leave going, I did everything in my power to book that job. If it happens, it happens. Yeah. Um, it, I think the biggest disappointment comes when you know that you know, maybe you didn't get enough sleep the night before, you didn't read over the lines properly, you didn't print them out, you tried to do them on your phone, you know, like you, you can then criticize yourself. Um, but if you know that you did everything that you've been trained to do, you can walk away with that kind of head held high. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. And I mean, in, in any business, you know, as a business owner, you know it is it is a hustle. It is every day you are adapting, you are assessing, you are, you know, like there's gonna be daily little failures and daily successes and you just keep pounding away at it. Right. Let's wrap it up with a, a question about the industry, the Portland industry in general. Mm -hmm. As someone who is on the inside, yeah. we're looking for, we're looking for uh, inside information <laughs> <Dun, now. dun, laughs> This is, we put this at the end, so everyone yeah. will watch all the way through, <laughs> not, not, not scrub to the end. Tease it every few so, minutes. So, um, what is your prognosis? The health of the acting industry in Portland, what do you see coming down the road? And of course, you can, this is where you can give us all insight. The inside information. So, you know, like we talked about earlier, I've now been agency owner for 10 years. And so I took over in 09, the bottom of the barrel economy wise. Um, and Portland, industry survived because we started getting shows like Leverage. And Leverage brought Grimm and then Librarians. And it has literally just snowballed from there. We've been super fortunate that we have great tax incentive programs um, that are supporting um, companies uh, to shoot here. We need to make sure that we're fighting for those, uh, keeping those incentives at the forefront of everyone's mind. So um, it's, it's good to kind of do the research on how an actor can focus on that help with that, um, but it's, you know, the streaming process, so HBO, Netflix, Facebook streaming, everybody has, like, a way to stream TV and film now, and that is creating content super fast. Mm -hmm. um, it's also allowing actors to stay busier, because they come into town, those, those projects come into town, and they shoot in a very short period of time, and then it's on to the next one. When we had Grimm on the bigger TV shows, you'd be on season one, and then you probably weren't gonna be on that ever again. And so you're sitting for, you know, potentially years until the other, the next TV show came into town. Now it's one after the other, and we have a TV show, and a film, and a short film, and another TV show, and it's back to back to back. 
So it's only getting better, but we just have to be ready for it. If at any point that you know we don't have enough actors to supply those projects, if we don't have enough diversity in our actors to mm. supply those projects coming to town, if we don't have enough crew or casting, like we have to support each other as an entire community um, in order to be able to keep those projects coming um, and, and them feeling like they can get the best quality by being here. It seems like people leave here happy. Even mm -hmm. The production companies mm -hmm. they come in to do, they leave here happy because people here are very nice. They were nice and, and, and ambitious. We're hungry and we're <laughs> thankful. And yeah, and it's good people with amazing locations to shoot at. Sure. But obviously all of our goals is to have multiple things going on at one time, right? Sure. And we have this year quite a bit. But we want that to stack even higher. And mm -hmm. so in order to do that, we have to be a huge community that's really supportive um, and, and have the numbers behind us. Right. It's not so much a competition as a community. Yeah. Right. It, it's silly if we try to backstab each other. Right. right. Thank you so much Thank for you. doing this. So I love you. You know that. <laughs> We've been friends for a long time. Family. We've been, we've been a family for a long time, yeah. so I really appreciate you coming and doing Absolutely. this. And, um, and best wishes for another 20, 30, 40 years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it.